Hello everyone, I'm Michael Hackney, and in this Kisslicer 1.6 tutorial, I'm going to take a look at setting and managing print speeds with a little side trip into flow rates. The way you set the print speeds in Kisslicer is a little different than other slicers, and sometimes confuses users who are trying out Kiss for the first time. But once you understand how it works, I think you'll agree with me that it's quite simple to use. Other slicers require you to edit multiple setting fields. You can do that in Kiss Slicer 2, but Kiss's speed slider control is a lot more convenient. Okay, let's take a look at the style tab in the profile settings dialog. The speed slider is in the lower left hand corner. As you can see from the labels, it lets you set the print speed settings between the printer's fast and its precise or slow settings. As you know, slow speeds usually result in more precise prints. When you move the sliders, you're actually changing four print speed settings in proportion to each other. You can see exactly how on the right hand side of the profile dialog where the speeds are actually displayed. Let me uh, say a few words about these different speed settings. In Kiss Slicer, a perimeter is the outermost path, the one that you see in the printed part. Usually it's only a single perimeter, but in Join Loop on the Styles tab, as I'm showing down here, if it's set to seam or full, actually KISS will generate two parameters that are, are continuous. And the purpose of that is to minimize stringing and blobbing. It's a really powerful feature and I'll talk a little bit more about that in an upcoming Slicer Masterclass video. For now, the important thing to understand is that printing the perimeter at a slower speed results in a more precise geometry and better print quality. I like to slow down my perimeters to about half of the overall print speed for the perimeters. Loops are the additional internal loops inside the perimeter. It's fine to print these fast since they can't be seen. The solid infill are the skin layers in KISS Slicer, or what are called shell layers in other slicers. The outermost shell layers are visible, so it's usually desirable to print these slower to get a nice surface finish. Finally, uh, the sparse infill speed sets how fast the infill is printed, and since the infill is usually not visible, you can print that fast too. Now let's see how you set these up in the printer speed tab. The speed settings in the left box define the fast print speed limits. The box on the right side sets the slow or precise speed limits. First, let's take a look at the set of fast speeds. You need to set these within the speed capabilities of your printer. If your printer can print at 110 millimeters per second, then it doesn't make any sense to set your fast print speeds to 200 millimeters per second. So what I do is start by setting the loops in the internal infill to a conservative maximum print speed. For this printer, 110 millimeters a second gives me nice high speed prints. I then set the perimeter speed to 50% of the maximum speed to improve print quality and I also get better precision. And finally, I set the solid infill speed to about 75% of the maximum. These slower perimeter and solid infill speeds result in much better printed parts. Once I have the set of fast speeds, I usually just take 10% of them and set the precise or the slow values as you can see here. And then once all the speeds are set, the speed slider on the style tab lets you quickly choose a set of speeds to give you the print quality and the overall print speed you want, and it makes it very easy to experiment with different speeds to see how it affects your printed part. Another nice feature is that KISS Slicer lets you explicitly set a first layer maximum speed. And I think this setting is one of the most important. If the first layer is printed too fast, it's not going to stick to the bed. It curls and peels away and ruins the print. I always print my first layers really slowly, never faster than 20 millimeters a second and usually 15 millimeters a second. I'd rather spend a little extra time printing a perfect first layer then trying to print it too fast and then having it peel off and needing to start over, clean up the bed, and start again. And while we're on the speed panel, there are a couple of other fields to set. Those are the X and Y travel and the Z speeds. These control the rapid moves when the hot end is moving and not extruding. Most firmwares like Smoothieware and the RepRap firmware, Repeteer, and Marlin have firmware settings for these travel speeds. And if you set the slicer travel speeds to be faster than the ones in the firmware, guess what? The firmware speeds are going to override them. So it usually makes sense to find out what you have set in the firmware and simply add the, enter those here. Now let's go back to the style tab. 
Whenever I print a new part, I load my style settings, and then I adjust the speed slider to trade off print quality versus how long it's going to take to print. For most things, I leave it at around 50%, which is a good compromise. In this case, that gives me about 60 millimeters per second for the faster loop and infill speeds. And while we're here, let's take a little side trip to talk about flow rates. Kiss Slicer calculates flow rates for you based on the extrusion width, the layer thickness, and the, the print speed for each of the four different speed settings. These are displayed next to the print speeds, as you can see here. In simple terms, flow rate is how fast the extruder can push molten filament through the nozzle. As print speed increases, your flow rate has to increase to keep up with it. Flow rate is important because all hot ends have a maximum flow rate they're capable of achieving. And that's the point where there's not enough heat or time to melt the filament. If you try to push filament through any faster, the hot end's going to jam. The E3D V6 hot end has a maximum flow rate of around 10 millimeters cubed per second, and it's best to stay below this maximum flow rate. 85% of the maximum flow rate is a reasonable and safe value, so I use 8.5 millimeters cubed per second for my E3D V6 hot ends. And you can set that maximum flow rate on the material tab to tell KISS not to attempt to print faster than the hot end can handle. Once you determine your hot end's maximum flow rate, you can use KISS Slicer's flow rate display to see how close you are to the limit or to determine the absolute fastest speed your printer is capable of. And that wraps up this tutorial on Kiss Slicer speed settings. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and blog to get updates about new tutorials I have in the works, and I'd really appreciate your support on Patreon. Thank you very much.